Meanwhile, back at the Linky Pig Buffet, Logan and Jake were looking at a now fat and obese Maddie who was finishing off the rest of the buffet and wouldn't go, in shock and regret. She now looked like a bird version of Big Chungus, and it was all their fault. The restaurant was a mess as well, but that was the least of her worries. Uh, maybe we should have read the waivers in full, said Logan with a hint of regret in his voice. At that moment, Maria and Ezekiel burst open the door of the restaurant and gawked up and now fat Maddie. Then Maria turned to the Cougar Brothers and gave him a dirty look. Jake! Logan! yelled Maria, causing the voice to come front and center to an angry Maria. Hey, Maria! Ezekiel! What's up, besties? <laughs> said Jake, turned to play it cool. Uh, how was the concert? Most annoying two hours of my life, said Ezekiel. Boy bands are way too overrated these days, especially one Goose Drexen. They're cute. They have catchy lyrics and entertaining dance moves. I can't stand them. Ezekiel, can we focus on the situation at hand right now? Asked Maria, pointing to the fat Matty that stood before her. These two decided it was appropriate to disrespect Austin's wishes and turn his adorable baby chick daughter into a big, fat, fatty, obese, oink, oink, picky, obese, hippo, crispy bacon. Sorry, said Ezekiel. Guys, I leave you alone with her for two hours, and you turn her into a bowling ball, yelled Maria in the fed rates. She looks like a 609-pound obese hippo. She also most likely has type 3000 diabetes right now. Diabetes is no Mickey Mouse game. She could die. Do you want her to die? Huh? Oh, am I going to die? Asked Maddie with worry in her voice. I can't die yet. I'm only three days old. Three days old, and you boys made her fatter than most of the pigs on the farm, continued Maria. I mean, seriously, she looks like a giant feces taken by a 4,000-pound obese hippo. I tried to tell him, said the waiter. You should be ashamed of yourself, especially, yelled Maria. Holding a food challenge like that? Are you trying to turn people into big, fat, imbecile, oink, oink, piggy, oinky, obese, hippo, crispy bacons? Read the waiver, said the waiter, as he handed Maria the waiver, he handed the Cougar Brothers and Maddie earlier. This just says, you can't sue me, said Maria, getting annoyed. Everyone always assumes that it's just those words, said the waiter. But look at the insides. Maria nodded and hoping the waiver it had way more than what the boys and Maddie thought it had. More importantly, it had the way to turn the competitors back to their normal size. So, all I gotta do is wait for her to fart an extremely long fart, said Maria. Then my godchild will not be an unbelievably huge, disgusting, obese, unattractive, fat, bacon belly, oinky pig trapped in a chick's body. Yeah, said the waiver. This is why we never have miners compete in the Oinky Pig Challenge. They become huge, disgusting, obese, fat, unattractive, Oinky Pig, going going Pop Belly Pigs. But these two cougars used their superstardom to threaten to get me fired if I didn't let all three of them compete. They're worse than the kids, than the kids in the hood, and the chick is fatter and heavier than the pigs on the farm. They used to be ashamed of themselves. Maria, of themselves. Maria nodded in agreement before her phone began to ring. Uh-oh, it's Austin, said Maria with her eyes widened. What do I do? If I tell him that Jake and Logan made his daughter into a fat, oinky pig bacon hippo, he'll probably take his anger out on me. Here, just answer it. We'll tell him, said Logan as he answered the phone. Hello? Hey, Logan, said Austin over the phone. Uh, where's Maria? Uh, she's with us right now, said Logan. Listen, we gotta be honest with you about something. Of course, said Austin. You can tell me anything, but first... How's Maddie? Uh, dude, said Logan as he snapped a picture of the obese chick. You might want to look at this picture. I'm sorry. As soon as Austin saw the picture, all hell broke loose. What did I tell you guys? Yelled Austin in a fit of rage. Maria and Ezekiel had nothing to do with this, said Logan. It was all me and Jake. Maddie even tried to talk us out of it. But we said no. Now until she first an extremely long fart, she'll be a fat imbecile, oink, going piggy, pig, goinky, it'll be simple, extra crispy bacon pop belly pig. Ah, how dare you boys disobey me, yelled Austin. You turned my daughter, who I trusted you to watch, into a pop belly pig, going crispy bacon bellied hippo. Even worse than that, you didn't even fully read the waiver until it was too late. Same on you. Two. Four. Same. We're sorry, said Logan. It won't happen again. It better not, yelled Austin before he took a deep breath. <sighs> Anyways, that's not what I need. Can you put me on the line with Maria? Sir, said Logan as he handed Maria the phone. 
Hey, Austin, said Maria. So sorry about this. This won't happen again. I'll deal with him later, said Austin. But right now, we got trouble. See, we just made the Andrew thing from bad to worse. The Ultra Instinct Diamond glowed, and now Andrew is a superhero villain. So can all of you, Maddie and Clue, come help us take him down? I got an idea. Sir, said Maria, we're on our way. As soon as Maria hung up the phone, see Logan, Jake, and Zico, and Maddie looked at each other and smiled. I think it's time to call the chopper, Maria said with pride. It absolutely is, said Ezekiel. I'll call them now. At that moment, Ezekiel was interrupted by the sound of Maddie burping and burning at the same time. It made her situation even worse than it already was for everyone, including Jake, who was angry at her for getting him and Logan in trouble. Burp at me again! I swear, I'll cook your fat belly for dinner, young lady! Jake yelled icing run. Well, none of this would have happened if you didn't convince me to go to the Winky Pig Buffet with you! Maddie yelled. Stop arguing, both of you! Mar Maria yelled. We gotta focus on getting in the helicopter and taking down Andrew. It's up to us, understand? To us! Jake and Maddie looked at each other and nodded. I think I got an idea, said Jake. One that can be a win-win situation for everyone. Meanwhile, Austin, Pablo, and the new Bacchardians were in their brand new robot suits, ready to defeat Ultra Instinct Andrew for good. Each suit was programmed with its own unique superpower. Austin had enhanced jumping abilities. Pablo had laser eyes. Kokod had a powerful voice. Martin Mongoose could slow time down. Rock and Roll Rano had super strength. Francis Frog had invisibility. And Natalie Nightingale had fire powers. They were full of pride and ready to stop the brother of the pig man for good. You guys ready to do this? Asked Austin, feeling like a leader. This isn't going to work, Austin, said Pablo, especially now that he has the diamond. Have faith, Austin said with a smile. At that moment, everyone flew over to where Ultra Instinct Andrew was causing chaos, the Las Vegas Strip, and got ready to take him down. Natalie began to build a fireball with her suit, much to everyone's anxiety. Natalie, what are you doing? Asked Pablo nervously. Fire heats me up metal, right? Asked Natalie. So I think that if we heat up the robot suit Andrew has on, the diamonds should fall right out. Everyone practically begged for Natalie to not throw the fireball, but all of this begging fell on deaf ears. As Natalie launched the fireball with one big throw, it ended up hitting Andrew, but not in the intended place. What the heck? What the heck? Asked Ultra Instinct Andrew as he noticed a piece of a suit from the hit area falling off and then saw the team of heroes. It's okay. I don't need that part. Now, guys! Yelled Austin as he put his mask on. Get the diamond! Everyone nodded and charged at Ultra Instinct Andrew Fairford, beginning the final battle. Meanwhile, Maria, Ezekiel, Jake, Logan, and Matt, Maddie, the oinky pig crispy bacon trapped in a baby chick's body, were on the helicopter, flying to where the battle was being held so they could help defeat Andrew for good. Jake! Logan! Yelled Maria, getting the boys who were at the controls attention. When I give the sing the signal, drop me in so I can distract Andrew. Got it, said Jake as he accidentally pressed a button that caused Maria to fall into the sea. No, you idiots! Yelled Maria as he fell into the ocean. Well, said Ezekiel, looks like, looks like it's up to us. Fly to the right, boys! Jake and Logan nodded and flew the exact direction that Ezekiel wanted them to go to. Meanwhile, Ultra Instinct Andrew was taking down all of the new backyard guns, one by one. Everyone kept trying to get the diamond from off of his head, but it was no use. He was just too powerful. You'll never win, Pablo and Austin, yelled Ultra Instinct Andrew as he pinned the couple down. You're just a dumb penguin and kangaroo. You know what's really pathetic? But you thought that you could get rid of a past instantly. That's not how the real world works. You didn't think that your actions on that day would have an impact on the people around you. But they have. Now, everyone you know and everyone you love will suffer because of you. At that moment, Ultra Instinct Andrew got hit on the head by a book. Austin and Pablo looked up and noticed that it was Jake, Logan, and Ezekiel in the helicopter. No one talks to our friends like that. Except for us, said Jake as he squeezed Maddie. No, Maddie! At that moment, Maddie let out one big fart towards... Ultra Instinct Andrew's direction. The giant supervillain screamed as the, fall, as the farts caused him to trip a bit. After the farts were done, Maddie was back to her normal self. This gave her the perfect opportunity to cast the cuteness spell on Ultra Instinct Andrew. Come on, Andrew! Maddie told Andrew as he gave him the cuteness size. Please don't turn the world into a post-apocalyptic wasteland! Just then, Ultra Instinct Andrew stopped dead in his tracks to admire the cuteness. Oh, they say the eyes are the windows to the soul, 
Ultra Instinct stated, that soul must be so good. I think it's time we do this, Martin. Austin replied, me too, bro. Martin agreed as he began to slow down time. It's so cute. How you thought that would work on me. Don't you know I'm dead inside? Ultra Instinct. Stink Andrew asked, unfazed by the cuteness spell. By the way, you got some ketchup on your beak. Maddie noticed this and wiped it off with a giggle. <laughs> What's so funny? asked Ultra Instinct Andrew, confused. Oh, I was just buying some time for my two dads and their friends, said Maddie. At that moment, the entire gang charged at Andrew and knocked him down. Then Martin slowed down on time and pressed a button on his suit. Everything was slow for a moment. Martin knew this was his time to save the day. Although he most likely could have slowed down time the first time and gotten the diamond from there, he was saving it for this. The mongoose proceeded to walk on Ultra Instinct Andrew and pluck the diamond from out of his head. Then he took the Ultra Instinct diamond and threw it into the Atlantic Ocean, never to be seen again. After time got back up to speed, Andrew was back to his normal self. Everyone surrounded the psycho pig, not noticing Maria climbing out of the water. Well, Maria said with a smile, looks like you got him taken care of. Guys, uh, <laughs> I can explain, Andrew said humiliated. It's over, Andrew, said as he, as he placed Andrew in handcuffs. You're under arrest for murder, kidnapping, theft, vandalism, reckless driving, abuse, and a host of other charges. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Do you understand the rights that I've read to you today? Say yes or no. Yes, sir, said Andrew as he was hauled away to the police station. A few days later, the trial began. Everyone took the stand, including the sister of Don Byrne. After all was said and done, Andrew was found guilty on all accounts. Everyone applauded after the second psycho was brought to justice. Pablo, Austin, the judge said, it's time for the sentencing. What do you want to do with him? Hmm, thought Pablo. I don't know. Any suggestions? Yelled Austin to the crowd. Fry him up into bacon! Yelled one audience member. Cut off his snout! Yelled another. Bury him underground! Yelled another. Put him in the electric chair! Yelled yet another. As the audience was making various brutal suggestions of what to do with Andrew, his eyes just widened further and further and further. No, please! I know I'm not perfect, but I deserve a second chance, Andrew said with a hint of fear in his voice. Look into your heart. Look into your heart! Um, I have an idea, said Maddie as he pulled back a curtain to reveal a cage. You use my mother and aunts for test experiments. Now, I think you'll have a great time being used for an experiment at the Psychology Primate Laboratory in Wisconsin. No! I have way too many expensive things on right now! I can't be a musky test subject! Screamed Andrew as he was dragged away into the cage. Everyone applauded as the brother of the pigman was dragged away to spend the rest of his miserable life as a test subject and a torture victim. It was the end of the pain. It was the end of the suffering. It was the end of the death. It was the end of the trauma. It was the end of the carnage. It was the end of Andrew J. Byrne. It was the end of the brother of the pigman. A few months had passed since Andrew was brought to justice and things were going great for everyone. Pablo went on to write a book about his experiences as a father and how he took down both of the Byrne brothers. Austin went on to sell his robot suit for millions of dollars, leading to he and his family moving into a new house. Maddie still thought about her mother at times, but she was a great addition to Pablo and Austin's family, and she was happy to have the love and affection she deserved. Maria and Ezekiel went on to get married and have five kids. In honor of their friends and the fallen victims, they named them Pablo, Austin, Tyrone, Uniqua, and Tassa. Jake and Logan retired from social media permanently to focus on being the best police officers in the world. Sure, they still had their goofy antics, but... They were way more mature than they were before. Mr. Juniper did end up getting disowned by his father and having to close down the egg factory due to the incident with Austin and Maddie, but he ended up opening a tofu factory and turning over a new leaf. Kolkot went on to lead a brand new band as the singer before being arrested in Tokyo for having 37 pounds of hash in his bag. Rock and Roll Rhino went on to become famous football stars and won 33 Super Bowls. 
Martin Mongoose went on to become a street performer in Venice Beach, making millions of dollars a year pl by playing a guitar. Francis Frog went on to complete anger management classes and therapy for his problems with being patronized. Natalie Nightingale went on to open 37 Outback Steakhouses in Australia so that it could actually be associated with Aust Australia. The Winky Pig Buffet ended up getting closed down after the incident with Maddie, Jake, and Logan due to the backlash they received after word got out that a minor did the Oinky Pig Challenge. Everyone's lives were going well. Things were finally back to the normal, and playtime wasn't over. Not by a long shot.